Attention citizens, nuclear strike imminent. I hope it works. That's a dirty move. To and where is Cat B? Where is Cat B? Oh, coming <laughs> in clear. Uh oh, I'm. That was weird. It just sped up. <laughs> They're just gonna report me and report me everywhere for no fucking reason. Okay. okay. That's us every single day, but all right. Suck them in. TV every night. I mean, you know, we can do the same thing in a nightclub. Well, almost. Good morning. UFOT Enterprises. I got two words for you. Stephen Greer. Arabine calls me to tell me Dr. Cyclops is on Channel 9 tonight. Crust. You've seen it twice already. Cat. Okay, what did I do? Can you tell us about the very special tea we're doing. So we're oh, talking good about Lord. coral, but this we're even carrying it over. So we decided. What is what is this cold tea thing? Well, anyway? when we started looking at all this wonderful um, information that is out there because of coral in coral's books, we said, how about if our cold UFO tea, which most of you have been along with us as we do. Our cold UFO tea is I choose a UFO story. Angel chooses a UFO story. We do not tell each other about it. We don't know what it's going to be about. And then we come on here and you're hearing it the same time she is hearing it. And the same time I am hearing it. We take the plunge. Yep. And I keep telling her someday we're going to choose the same story. I know it because we think so much alike. <laughs> But so far, it hasn't happened. We do not mention <laughs> anything. Having it be two coral cases has been the most we have ever known about anything. Yeah, that you're right. I didn't even think of that. So we decided, let's do coral case. Yeah, let's do it. And One in of fact, this is so cold. We go into this so cold, we don't even know where the story is going to end. So if you hear a lot of screaming and slapping, uh, just know that's all part of it. And uh, That's how we do it. That's how we, that's how we do it. Run this, run this little game. Okay, well, uh, I have to tell you a little something. What? What? On a summer night. Yeah. In 1971. Okay. There was a woman named Esther. Okay. Esther was a middle-aged woman. Aren't we all? Yeah. Now, Esther was from Alberta, Canada, a place I have not been. But no, I but do you, know you keep Canada, finding cases from up there. <laughs> Canada is a great place where people can make it rain the 50s and hundos onto cats. <laughs> <laughs> Shoosh. It's also where my love, Dave Scott, is from. We're going to get some uh, channeling in with some aliens tonight. Yes, we are going there. And Liz. Oh, it's a love thing now? Maybe. <laughs> okay. Shout out to BBJ and Sam the Chubby Moo making it rain on cats. The people in Canada are so wealthy, they just shower cats in hard cash. As they should. Yes, and it smells like maple syrup, and if you don't have any, you're nothing in this world. <laughs> that is not a cat. <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> I call her Tashi the Wonder Dog because she wonders if she is a dog. <laughs> Hi, Tashi. She's dying to get up here. Okay, so. They just get me every time. Esther witnessed the exploratory activities of three humanoid beings who landed in a box-like transparent craft a short distance from her farmhouse. Box-like? <laughs> I'm not sure I've heard that shape described before. Also transparent. Yeah. Does that mean a whole bunch of giant windows? 
just one the whole thing is one big window your favorite no it's just i'm gonna we're gonna have to ask diana prince about this i don't know <laughs> i wish this is this is what esther oh. esther's talking now okay i was at home and suddenly i was a attracted to a light coming through my windows. <laughs> I couldn't ascertain what that was all about. <laughs> That's a weird sentence. <laughs> Hark! Why I, I could this, not... <laughs> why I picked this case. I could not ascertain. I was very attracted to a light, but I couldn't ascertain... <laughs> I couldn't ascertain what that was all about, so I went around to the front of my home, where I have <laughs> so, where, I, where I have a small porch. What? And so it was coming in her window, and she was drawn to it. But then she said, "Because I cannot ascertain, I'll just go out front. I'll oh. just use the front door." Listen, Alicia's not going to go out there and wave. I can just spoil her. <laughs> Spoiler alert, this woman, she might be middle-aged, but she knows what's what. <laughs> Do you oh. know that their hundos and fitties smell like maple syrup? <gasps> I bet they do. <laughs> That's an upgrade they have from us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, here's the greatest part. Accompanying me Gets better. to the porch was my old yellow dog. Oh. His name was Groucho Barks. <laughs> you weren't kidding that is the best name I, I, this is the case i love it this is better than sticky oh my god my face hurts because he likes okay. sticks groucho okay, so barks. She, she grabs groucho barks and uh they go to the front porch because there's some really attractive lights outside attractive <laughs> I was surprised to see when I got there. There was a rectangular shape lighted object down on the ground at the intersection of two dirt roads. On the end of the craft, it appeared to have been opened, revealing an interior illuminated by a diffused white and opaque light. Immediately, I got a feeling of love. Oh. I like that. So not only was it attractive, but she also felt the love. Coming right out of this thing. <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, I like Esther, this UFO. I know. Esther barely had time to recover from this feeling of when love. she was hit with shock. <gasps> Two human-like forms moved about inside the craft. And as her eyes grew accustomed to the dark, her greatest fears were confirmed. No more love? Her husband was cheating on her. <laughs> he was inside <laughs> the craft already. With a big busty blonde. <laughs> Those damn Nordics were everywhere. You can't stop them. You can em emulate them, but you can't be one of them. Her greatest fear it's confirmed. What? <laughs> Although the creatures seemed outwardly human, they were unmistakably alien. Oh, <laughs> just a dramatic. It's just that was a lot of drama <clears throat> to just say she looked out and saw something strange. <laughs> no. Okay. She then noticed a third figure. He was outside across the road he was in a squatting position oh no why was he tapping some syrup was he he was hunkered down as if in intestinal distress oh <laughs> that is seriously not just squatting, but <laughs> what they do 
was happened a lot in the 70s. I'm sorry if you don't know this, but what happened would be um, when these guys would come down in their clear boxes, they hit you with the love ray. They do the hit you with the love ray, and then they take. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. It's your greatest fear. We were raised knowing this. We did know this. Is that a UFO? <laughs> or is that a oh wedding my. dress back there? All right. It is right there. It's a Hunkered right down as if in intestinal dress. distress. From her, <laughs> from her vantage point, it appeared to be wearing, here we go again with these Canadians, skin tight uniform of drab green color. What was drab? <laughs> Similar to. No, it did not say that. You're saying that. It was like a skin diver's <laughs> outfit. Drab and green. Like an. No, it was not. She could not distinguish the facial features of any of the three creatures since their heads appeared to be covered by an even tighter see through fabric. That's new. That's, that's you know what? Not, okay, just just stop right here. Not a comment on me. That's really in there. No matter what happens from here on out, we are going to make a fashion book oh. from all these cases of what every single witness has we, seen. We, I think we have to at this point. I'm sorry, and then we can mention the case. And even. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to uh, copyright that right now. So don't try and steal it. <laughs> okay. That would be a T for trademark. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Not copyright. Trademark. She I don't care. <laughs> Do a C shape. She could not distinguish the facial features because of any have... of the three, even oh. the squatter, because their heads appeared to be covered in an even tighter see-through fabric. Like Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. <laughs> no, this is how she describes it. It was like these creatures had pantyhose over their heads. <laughs> now, this you know is something you... that we love to do as kids. Yes. Why, I don't know. Yes, my sister would do it so that her nose went <laughs> We loved it. We loved it. We just took a, a, a pair of legs, remember those? And we just pulled them over our heads <laughs> and run around the yard. You know, now they get to, you get to stream as a kid, anything that's ever been made on earth. And back then we just had a pair of nylons. We just yank over our heads. <laughs> but you don't know that you just brought up a memory for me of my oh, sister what? did that. And then she ran by with her friend chasing her. Yeah. And she was pretending to be a rabbit and her friend had a sombrero. Oh. <laughs> and I just saw this. Sorry, dude. We have a <laughs> lot of good memories associated with pantyhose. Now I wear legs. Legs have memory on. <laughs> There's so many. I mean, we loved it. I kind oh of have God. a deep sadness that today's youth um, don't even know what know. legs are. They're never going to know the look, that horrific look of pantyhose. For <laughs> or I playing mean, with that big plastic egg. You don't know. Oh, that part was fun too. Yeah. Anyway, Esther sees anyway. these pantyhose face skin divers. Oh my God. <laughs> getting on the side of the road. Her and stomach green. is churning. She says her stomach is churning, and so is the aliens. I was going to say, like the other guy. Yeah. Um, when she saw the creatures off putting hands. Not putting hands. <laughs> I just, I, just, I have a hard time reading my own English. Off putting. Off putting hands. Okay. Why? Okay, so what was wrong with that? This is the quote. <laughs> it's gonna be good they were like mittens <laughs> <laughs> okay not exactly a ski do mitten but you know 
those with the very prominent thumbs going to a point. <laughs> I gather that's why they had so much trouble picking up rocks. <laughs> Were they trying to pick up rocks? This is new info for us. We're just reading <laughs> as we go. Skin divers with pantyhose and mittens. <laughs> mittens made out of flesh, though, guys. Flesh. Well, this was this was like a solid finger. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh no. And a big fat, fluffy oh, thumb. Appended. Uh, oh Having my Having a God. hard time picking up rocks. <laughs> I don't know. It wouldn't be too hard. <laughs> Esther remembers a radio show she had heard previously on CFCN AM Radio 100 in Calgary, where listeners were urged to look for an instrument panel if they were ever inside a UFO. Oh, my God. This was information that we needed in the 70s. Yes. Had we been there. And she remembered it at that moment. Good girl. (laughs) Stuff is going down if they just are out on the radio saying listen if you ever get into a ufo situation look for the instrument panel then what and hit the off button what is what is the yeah look for look for the big switch that says off and on (laughs) maybe a red light no i i think pull the pantyhose over your head look at the dashboard (laughs) Just try to blend in. This is still good advice. Go like this. (laughs) If you see a small box, don't try and steal it. Look for the on off switch. Don't steal it. Just a bunch of aliens with nail polish because their runs are (laughs) (laughs) nail polish. No, no one's gonna get that unless they're a certain age. (laughs) And a woman. Oh my God. You can fold space and time to get from here to here, but you need pantyhose to survive. <laughs> to break like through. My mother. Okay. Esther continues. The humanoid, the, the human, it's one word, humanoid. Yeah. Humanoid. <laughs> at this time realized someone was there. Me, Esther. <laughs> she says that. Me, Esther. But wait, was she still far away looking in? Or did she walk up much like my friend, Mr. Flynn, and wait? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> the humanoid, two words. At this, this might be a Canadian colloquialism, a humanoid. Noid. The humanoid at this time <clears throat> realized someone was there, me Esther. Me and- Esther. <laughs> It's me, Esther. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is why they removed this chapter out of the Bible. Because <laughs> Esther. Esther. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, um, okay. It's me, Esther. Okay. It's me, Esther. <laughs> so okay. this humanoid... <laughs> He realizes someone is there, her Esther. (laughs) And he had covered as much of the instrument panel as he could with his person and his arm. And his mitt. (laughs) Wait. He's covering the instrument panel. Because he could read her mind? Yes. Or had they heard the radio station give out that info willy-nilly to everyone about looking at this? It's the first time the aliens saw a dog with a cigar. And I, exactly going and raising its eyebrows up and down. And then I, and I'm imagining he's trying to cover it like this and she's going like this. Too and she's while well, he's doing Listen, Coral Lawrence and she knew what was going on here and she needs this to be out there. He had his person and his arm covering the panel. Yes. Because I'm pretty damn sure they had like, um, uh, what's his thingy? (laughs) Okay. 
I'm pretty dang sure. Yes. He's trying to hide the fact he's got Nazareth hair of the dog album shoved in there in an eight track. Eight track. Yeah. None of your business, Esther. <sighs> All right. Okay. Do not try and now copy you're messing, my work, Esther. This is none you're of your messing business. with the son of a bitch. Don't go there. He... Love hurts. You thought I didn't know? I know. Love hurts. <laughs> Love does hurt. He continually kept looking backwards at me to see that his arm was still covering the panel in the front of the craft. So he Wait, was he was looking, looking backwards at her? He's looking at her. And Wait, so now he's like this? He's like this. <laughs> but you can't see what I'm covering. <clears throat> Listen, if that was a concern, why is your ship clear? <laughs> You're going to have a hell of a time. You could have put some pantyhose over that. Really? That would, that's really the best of all possible worlds. He continually like a sunshade. Yeah, he Only kept looking backwards. It's a console shade. <clears throat> he kept looking backwards to see that his arm was still covering what was in the front of the craft. So he doesn't even trust himself. He's got to keep. <laughs> Too frightened to advance. Esther remained a safe distance from the craft okay. while watching the aliens every move. Well, he's covering it. Okay. And what about the one that's crouched outside with the <laughs> what happened? What happened to you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We you guys, we have two stories this week about aliens coming and dumping waste. This is we do. Something we did have to worry about and and we but we always find these coincidences not before. It's after. We I didn't mean, do it on purpose. Why, this is cold tea. What happens, yeah. happens. Yep. Okay, so um, I don't know what a safe distance is. I guess that's what yeah. I was trying to think of. Right. As your dude, I don't know how close he got. I mean, he got I mean she's him. not still on her front porch. She's come a little no, closer. No, she, well, if I saw an alien scrouched down. And you knew, road, and you had been instructed to go look for the dash. <clears throat> You, you get this feeling of love and then you get to see them with their mitt, all their mitten, mitten refinery. Okay. Please mention in the chat or the comments, I guess, if you're watching this um, now or on the replay, what is a safe distance for aliens? We should ask our audience right now, how close should we get? Should just go right in there? <laughs> like, yeah. Or you get a, you're going to get a scar. Yeah, you might. Okay. Well, imprint. So, uh, the being at the panel motions to his companion with his inside the craft, who in turn motions to their friend outside to come back in. Wipe and there's come no in. really this. The takeaway that I want you to get here is <clears throat> there's no higher power. I mean, I can think of multiple kinds of telepathies. But these guys prefer the mitten version. They're just using their mitt. And they're Wait. just doing it. And yeah, it's like, hey, buddy, can you let Randy know? Let let Randy know. We got to get him. We got to go. And and yet he knew she was going to come in looking. So he's already covering up without because he must have heard that thought. You're yet he attract us with your damn love, Ray, and your beautiful lights. And your beautiful mittened hair. Your fleshings. Your flesh mitt. Esther says the being outside who had been crouched down, it turns <clears throat> out he was picking up free samples. Oh, good. He wasn't sick. No, his dude's looking for summer sausage and sweet hot mustard from Hickory Farms. Okay. <laughs> well, she says rocks and uh, not who's dirt. looking for rocks she when you're in Canada. It was picking up, not scooping. <laughs> yeah excuse me distinction on on that one thank you uh, <clears throat> coral okay after a moment i tried to get closer you know to get a real eyeful <gasps> is that what you said i love that but my old dog groucho barks wouldn't let me 
he was, he was he was scared to death he was protecting her maybe or he was yeah. just scared <laughs> he lost a cigar cutter yeah he pushed me right back to where i was and that was quite a push you got to admit and <laughs> i don't know i wasn't there <laughs> we weren't there esther you got to admit it's that me. that was a big push it's me esther it's me esther <laughs> Oh my god, I, I bet do she's love, a I do love any um story. I don't <clears throat> care what it is where oh yellow dog saves a woman's life from yeah. aliens. Yes. Um so she's gonna go, but the dog pushes her back. Yes. Well then I came in to attract my brother's attention. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Not I came in to get my brother. I came in to attract. So then I imagine she comes in and she's singing and dancing or something. <laughs> or she starts throwing stuff at his head. I, I came in to attract my brother's attention. <laughs> then I looked through a window to see the object again and what they were doing. But there wasn't even a light there anymore. When I returned with my brother, there was nothing there. And so help me, I wasn't drinking. I'm not a drinking woman. The end. <laughs> oh, no, no. <clears throat> so no, much fun. No. I want to hang out with Esther. So, yeah. In, on March 12th, 1965, Mr. Flynn took his, okay, another funny word, his swamp buggy. So I had to look it up. Yeah. I do have a picture. Okay, put it here. It's, yeah, right there. It's a weird contraption. <laughs> Although if you're from there, Look probably. Look at that. Oh, I want one. It's not just from the 60s. They do still exist. And there are races, oh, know, swamp buggy. I, yeah. It just sounds like something from Scooby-Doo, like, like swamp buggy. And there would be a swamp monster coming. I want a swamp um, buggy and a doom buggy. So we can do, so, we can do both. So he had a swamp buggy, uh, which is it's just like a bunch of big wheels and then a weird kind of flat seating area that, that you can get on, but it allows you to go through swampy Everglades ish land. Okay. Everglades. So yes, Everglades. Oh, my favorite L7 song. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so, all right. So he took his swamp buggy and four dogs and headed out to an isolated area um, near big Cypress uh, Indian Reservation, which is in the Everglades, to go on a weekend hum hunting trip. So four dogs, loading them up available? in his buggy. I love him so far. Goes out to do a weekend away. Uh, just him and the dogs. Wife is at home. Okay. At about 1 a.m., he spotted a very large and brilliant light directly above the cypress tree line brilliant light so he watched and it made four sweeps across the sky so i don't know it was like mesmerizing him or something. <laughs> he watches it go by four times um and at that point um he decides <sighs> let's see uh i'm so sorry and then oh so it it does these four sweeps and then it comes back to the initial where it was when he first saw it so he set his swamp buggy off in that direction and he saw that it slowly started descending to the ground there this guy um, again this guy's got ovaries of steel i'm telling you That's like cool. why why are you not going the other direction <laughs> It gets better though. Okay. So as he approached, the light was within a few feet of the ground. Um, only now it was not just the light. Um, it wasn't just a glowing light. There was an outline of a huge disc shaped object. You could clearly see this, that there was this disc shaped object. Mm -hmm. um, he was still about a quarter of a mile from the object. So he said he took out his binoculars and watched it. It had a shape like a flattened cone, about twice the size at the bottom as it was high, and four tiers of your favorite thing to find on a UFO, windows. Four tiers of windows appeared to encircle the ship, and 
it had a definite metallic appearance. Um, okay, well. he got it gets pretty into detail about the like it was almost confusing the stuff they were adding in about the size of the windows and I really didn't think it mattered so I sort of gleamed over that um because we all know we need a physical aperture if you bend time and space that's why I'm like what and then that many windows well if you have one why not have 20 really I guess maybe they wanted to see the Everglades maybe and swamp buggies I love it yeah okay. um so anyway so many windows um around each of these windows was a strip of black substance and he estimated each window was two foot by two foot so there's tons of windows the ship was at least eight feet high um from like the the bottom light where there's light coming out the bottom and then to the top of the cone i guess <laughs> so Mm, he estimated the the um, the um, the diameter at seventy two feet. He approaches the ship even closer. He got out, walked to the edge of the light, which was coming out of the bottom. Please leave the dogs of the craft. Buggy. He steps up to the ship in about a six foot inside the six foot um, lighted area now that is, you know, it's on the ground, it's lit up about six feet around. So he gets to the edge of the light. This dude is brave. And what do you think he did? Um, he found a clue. He <laughs> got sprigged. You can only find clues if you're in Utah or Arizona. Um, he waved at the windows. <laughs> Okay, um, excuse me. <laughs> was there someone there that he was waving to or was he just like, hi? Okay, so when I read that, I was just like, <laughs> what did you do? All right, all right, hang on. He got no response. Oh, well, okay. So he stood there for another minute. I love, I love it. And then he waved again. Oh, of course he did. <laughs> but wait, this time he got a response. A short white beam of light appeared to originate from the bottom of the row of windows and struck him smack between the eyes. <laughs> then he lost consciousness. <gasps> I'm sorry. <laughs> You buddy, don't you wave at me and then just rip. Howdy ho, neighbor. Bonk. It's like out of a movie. Boom. It's, it's right, between, right between the eyes. Okay, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do you see my way here to just Kundalini <laughs> MF her? Do you see my conundrum? I, I, I didn't. This is not. This is great. I, I don't blame them. I'm. Step back. <laughs> My face hurts from laughing. Okay. You know, it okay. happens a lot in hunting and fishing when you're just sitting there doing nothing. And then, you know, the salmon's in your face, just jumping yeah. right out of the water. Which is what the same thing with these aliens, right? They just, they park their ship. You um, just reminded me of my my dear friend who shares a birthday with me when he was little. He went fishing with his dad, and his dad threw back the to cast, yeah. and the hook hooked him right between the eyes. Maybe that's what happened to maybe gentlemen. I'm sorry, Mike. I just put that out there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he, boom, he lost the eyes. This dude is unconscious. He is laid out. And he lost, exactly, lost consciousness. Control of his um, when he woke up, he said he was nearly blind. Um, he could not see out of his right eye, and he only had a bit of partial sight in his left eye. He, 
crawls and creeps his way back and he finally somehow finds the his swamp buggy um oh, one of his creeping and crawling towards the craft yeah get away from the craft to get to his buggy sorry he's looking for the buggy and i guess <laughs> stop <laughs> knock him out he keeps dragging himself towards his UFO. Okay. <laughs> i'm gonna wave at you <laughs> God damn damn. It. will you please wave back to me just give me a courtesy wave. Listen, I bought a Subaru because every time you drive a Subaru, other Subarus wave to you. And this guy's like, he can't get one back. I oh my God. It. He wanted, I, he just wanted a wave back. He just wanted on one of these. <clears throat> so he gets to his buggy. Okay, he's crawling away. He's not crawling towards, in. he's crawling away. Um, And I, I guess he had one dog that was the other three had ran off and one is still there and it's really upset and he looks around and he notices like he sees a bunch of he said scuff marks where he then said he figures it was from him crawling like in his unconscious state I don't know how you would be moving around if you were unconscious but that's what he said that it was marks from him like just blindly crawling around and trying to figure out where he was going um yeah because that i mean so he he gets into his buggy and makes it as far as the reservation and he has a, a friend that lives there and the friend comes out and helps get him drives him back home gets him back home which is when he realizes that he's actually been unconscious for 24 hours not just a couple of hours now I wonder is, if we now now I'm like I'm on the now I'm thinking about Robert Taylor right mm -hmm. out there with those when he got knocked out in the woods uh huh at Jack my I am wowzers okay he's gotten this dude has missing time yeah so I don't know that you were just laying there for 24 hours unconscious were you possibly mm -hmm. yeah like but no one did a I guess a regression he did or he didn't want to do a regression so yeah, well, he just thinks he was unconscious okay. Um, instead of for just a couple of hours, like he thought wife takes him to the hospital immediately. And his examination revealed some very strange symptoms. And we're going to quote now, this is APRO's, um, their, uh, communication received by APRO from Dr. Harvey Stipe. We got names, we got names, cool. his attending physician at the hospital. All right. And I, again, I shortened this down as well because it was a lot of doctor speak. Um, and I just tried to explain what was happening. Yeah. The eye condition was hemorrhaging into the anterior chamber of the eyes. Um, and that was a trauma that had, that had happened. So he's, that's why he's blind in the, in the one eye. The forehead was examined and presented a thickened area just above to the right eye like center but a little bit closer to the right so maybe it wasn't quite dead center it was slightly over to the right but there was um the center of this area was depressed slightly and abraded about one centimeter in diameter so wow like, dude like got a, tased by a group of aliens well, all I could think of was, you know, it is right here when you're a woo woo person, that's your pineal gland is, is right here. Um, which some oh, people oh, wait, believe. Wait, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, this, that is wowzers. So you know. they not only bagged this guy, mm -hmm. they maybe got some like cool party drugs. Yeah. Some alien party drugs. Yeah. So, um, all right uh okay so it was slightly dented one centimeter in diameter um after his fourth day in the hospital he was released so he was in there a while because um so they couldn't find dr french kiss no they did not send dr french kiss another They're thing no worker with eyes i know he will always fix the eye and it's too bad when was this this was oh this was long before yeah he was still in med school at that point. <laughs> okay. Um, another thing though that happened to his body, 
God, what happened to his body? And it was just like, it was so random. Okay. He's, he had no uh, reflexes showing in his stomach muscles, his biceps, his triceps, and his Achilles tendon. There's no, like, his muscle tone was just like not there and there was no reflex. <laughs> I don't even know what to say what about this. So that, four weeks that, later, four weeks later, um, he was, listen. he went back and he still had a depressed area over the right eye <laughs> and he still had cloudy vision in the right eye. He also had all kinds of the, the muscle weakness was still there four weeks later. Um, he had lost the reflex response in, in these muscles. This never comes back? I mean, not as far as we know. It may be, I don't know, five years later, 10 years later. I don't know. I, just at the time. Um, <clears throat> this doctor also, though, he vouched for Mr. Flynn saying he'd known him for over 25 years and he was That's always emotionally stable yeah. and reliable. Of course. Um, then Dr. Stipe went with Mr. Flynn back to the scene of the crime. I would. Um, I don't know, maybe like four weeks later, I guess, maybe after he was feeling better and they took photos. So I guess APRO has some cool photos somewhere that they didn't you know, include in the uh, book. I'm gonna just put those in the vault with the others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so they noticed that um, there was freshly burned treetops in the area and the sides of the trees looked to be stripped and like burned stripped, mm -hmm. like something had, you know, scraped down Correct. them. Mm -hmm. So doctor goes and sees this and, and takes pictures of this. Um, Mr. Flynn kept up correspondence with APRO um, oh, and at another time, Mr. Flynn, he went and took soil samples, but then he sent them to a Colonel Robin Lewis, again, we got names, at Homestead Air Force Base, but no one showed up to interview him, nor did he have any knowledge that an examination of that site had ever taken for, uh, place. I mean, APRO can only do so much. We can... We've established um, that. Yeah, so the end. <laughs> How'd you like that one? Who was soliciting the dirt? Who is a dirt solicitor? What happened oh, to the dirt? Yeah, I. who has the dirt? They probably just took it and tossed it out in the garden or something. Girl. And then he gets stood up. <laughs> No one comes. No one wants to interview him. He seems friendly as hell. He's really yeah. put his life on the line. How friendly. Even he though he owned a nightclub, he still seems nice. Cat, when you're not squatting, where can people find you? <laughs> Usually I can be found at Cat UFO Time on Instagram yeah that's where you can find her she's got a really cool feed you can hang out with her and chat with her yes she's just tell me what you think of this she's available 24 7 really yeah. of course and, and if you want to hang out with me i am on ig as well at uh nuka cola my box is clear <laughs> i wasn't sure where i was going with that uh so you can find me here if you want to join us uh, we dot r dot ufot mm -hmm. We're also on instagram yeah we're after a holiday uh with goat herd on a bridge i am back with morning salutations and sweet cuddly nighty nights for um all the folks yes now that you're back did uh, you want to yeah, discuss what? your your twerking or not at all I would, however, love to discuss our Patreon because we have a new level. We do. Yay. It's, it's so cool because it's so doable. I got a bunch of X's and O's. Yeah, we got a bunch. X's, just like X's just and like me, Esther's UFO. Okay. You uh, feel the love. We love 
love you very much. <laughs> Bye from Bye. me, Esther. <laughs> Bye. I'm sorry, everybody in the live having to watch this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> it's so short, but it's sweet. It was just how I, I like it. I think I laughed harder during that than any. Oh.